welcome to Think About It with your host, Jaden Miller. Good day, good day, and thank you for joining me on Think About It with Jaden Miller. This is your host, Jaden Miller. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, before I begin, or like I begin every episode, please check out my website at www.jadenmiller.com. Jaden Miller is spelled J A Y D E N M I L L E R.com. Please like, share, and subscribe on my YouTube channel and like, comment, and follow on your favorite podcast platform. You can find me on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Spreaker, Google. Podcast, Castbox, iHeartRadio, Audrey, Podvine, Amazon, and so many more. Again, it's good to uh, be with you guys today. And um, so, like I've been doing for the last few le- weeks, let me just kind of go down, run down the headlines of what's going on in the world. Uh, well, of course, Russia is still up to its stupidity in its war against the Ukraine. And uh, if I was Vladimir Putin, I'd be really ashamed that my Goliath of a nation is uh, still trying to beat up on a David of Ukraine. But yet the Ukraine keeps fighting back. And so uh, what uh, Vladimir Putin thought could be over with in a matter of weeks has now extended into quite a many months. So uh, he should be very, very ashamed of himself. Um, what else is going on in the world? Herschel Walker. <laughs> Herschel Walker is running for United States Senate in Georgia, and he has been under fire because he uh, is one that believes that abortion should be banned in the United States. And I mean, throughout not only at the federal level, but at the state levels, too. Uh, but yet it appears as though uh, her Uh, Herschel Walker uh, may have paid for an abortion at some point in his life. Now, he denies it, but yet he acknowledges sending $700 to the woman that had at least one of his children for an abortion. And so these are some allegations that he has been fighting for the last few weeks. I'll just say this. He just had a uh, debate with... uh, Uh, his uh, Democratic uh, opponent uh, last week. And, you know, I'll just say that the Republicans made a huge mistake in choosing uh, Herschel Walker. He is just an ignoramus of a candidate. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm just I just have to tell the truth. Uh, They certainly could have found someone so much better than Herschel Walker with so little things, you know, that are keep crap coming up out of his past. I mean, you know, just absolutely ridiculous. And his own son even comes out against him. So I don't know. I don't think that was a great choice on behalf of the Republicans for the Senate campaign in Georgia. Um, Well, if you like ketchup uh, and other sauces that have tomatoes in them, get ready to spend more for them because there is a water crisis and farmers are dealing with... uh, Uh, a lot of drought, specifically in California. And um, so, uh, yeah, it used to cost about $3,500 an acre to produce uh, tomatoes, but now um, it's $5,000. So inflation, I mean, all of these things are causing uh, prices to go up. And so uh, tomatoes are the type of crop that needs a lot of water. They need water uh, to grow, uh, but then they also need water to uh, to be clean before being cooked. So, um, so yeah, we may be paying a little bit more for tomatoes and ketchup and those things uh, coming up. Um, if you have not been paying attention, I don't know where you've been. <laughs> But uh, weather has been changing uh, throughout the United States. So here in my great city of Phoenix here, we are now finally in the 80s after a hot, hot summer of 100 degrees, I think, almost every day, if not every day, from sometime in May through uh, maybe the first week in October. So uh, really happy to see some 
some moderating temperatures here. But from what I understand that there is some frost and freeze warnings that are in store tomorrow morning, which would be Tuesday, uh, in some of the central areas of the country. So uh, those of you that are growing things, plants, flowers, that kind of thing, you may want to bring them in or at least be very, very careful with those. All right. So um, today I just wanted to delve into this subject really, really quickly. Um, And that is that shootings of police officers are on the rise. And this is very, very troubling. Uh, It's very, very troubling for um, certainly police chiefs. uh, The uh, FBI has chimed in, you know, and uh, certainly it should be uh, something that we as citizens be concerned about as well. Um, And so I'll just go back to last week uh, during a 24-hour period that ended last Wednesday, um, several police officers from departments across the country were shot in the line of duty. Uh, In Decatur, Illinois, two police officers were shot while making a traffic stop. An officer shot and killed the suspect. In Philadelphia, three SWAT team members were shot while executing a warrant. An officer shot and killed the uh, the subject. Uh, And in Bristol, Connecticut, three officers were shot, two fatally, in an ambush attack while responding to a domestic disturbance report. And the surviving officer shot and killed the subject. The thing about the subject is is that he fired over 80 rounds at police. Uh, And again, this happened in Bristol, Connecticut. And so in all, from Monday through Friday last week, 13 police officers were shot amid a heightened level of violence against law enforcement officers this year. From the beginning of the year through September 30th, there were 252 officers shot, including 50 fatally, according to the Fraternal Order of Police. The number of officers shot represents a 5% increase over the same period in 2021 and a 6% increase over the same period in 2021. 20. Last year, 73 officers were intentionally killed in the line of duty, the most since the terrorist attacks of September 11th. 2001. Philadelphia Police Commissioner Danielle Outlaw says that she's outraged and disgusted. She says that she's wondering where the level of outrage and upset is outside of the law enforcement community. Uh, Commissioner Outlaw says that right now things are wrong because the level of violence that we're seeing against our law enforcement officers is just beyond outrageous. The increased violence against police officers in the last few years mirrors the broad rise in shootings and violence in the United States since 2020. Even in Mississippi, um, this was last Tuesday, Greenville Detective Maisha Stewart was killed during what's been described as a big shootout between two males. The Mississippi Bureau of Investigation is leading the probe into her death. Uh, It appears as though the uh, person that shot and killed uh, Detective Stewart uh, was also wounded, uh, but he was wounded after he shot someone else in the head and a woman in the foot uh, during this really, really horrible situation. Uh, She was the third police officer killed in Mississippi this year. Um, There was one officer that was killed uh, during a uh, traffic, uh, uh, when he was struck by a car during a traffic uh, uh, altercation. And then uh, in June of this year, Officer Kenneth Croom with the Meridian Police Department in Mississippi was responding to a domestic violence call when he was fatally shot. Um, the person that shot the the uh, th- at the three officers in Bristol, um, Connecticut, was a 35 year old named Nicholas Butcher, um, and it says that his brother, 32 year old Nathan Butcher, was also at the scene. Officers went to the side door of the house and spoke to Nathan Butcher. As Nathan Butcher stepped out, gunfire erupted. Nicholas Butcher fired well over 80 rounds, attacking the officers from behind, fatally shooting both Sergeant DeMonte and Officer Hamsey of the uh, Bristol, Connecticut Police Department. Uh, Just a tragic, uh, tragic thing to happen. And, you know, um, 
A day after these officers were killed, the Las Vegas officer Chuang Thai was killed while responding to a domestic disturbance call uh, last week Thursday. Um, not only was Officer Thai a protector of our community, he was a father, a son, and a brother, the Las Vegas Police Protective Association said. And so, um, what is going on? You know, in the United States where those individuals that, you know, have been sworn to protect us uh, are now being shot and killed in the line of duty. Um, it's always, always shocking to me. And, and if you guys didn't know, the number of police officers killed in the line of duty certainly is, is going up. And that's sad. Usually they are in response to police officers responding to domestic situations or traffic violations, okay? I mean, those are those are the incidents that police officers have to be the most wary of, okay? Uh, when we talk about domestic situations, I mean, it can be, you know, between, you know, domestic partners or it can be a husband and wife or what have you. But as soon as the police arrive, arrive, that anger that they may have at each other then gets turned in another direction, you know. Uh, and it's really, really sad. Um, you know, uh, if you've never been to a police funeral and unfortunately, as a uh, former retired member of law enforcement, I have been to a number of them and um, to see, you know, little children of these police officers that now will be growing up without a mom or without a dad. In the case of Detective Maisha Stewart in Mississippi, she leaves behind a three-year-old child. Uh, and so, you know, some of these individuals had wives, you know, uh, in, in the case of Officer Thai, you know, he, you know, was was a father, you know, he had parents. And so um, it's always really, really tragic. And I know that there are people out there that have issues with the police. I understand that. OK, but um, the majority of police officers and I want to make this very, very clear. The majority of police officers that are on the street every day. Uh, they took the job because they really, truly want to serve and protect the community. And I really, truly believe that. And now, you know, as an African-American, I've seen police at their best and I've seen policing at its worst. OK, but there is still nothing that could ever change my mind in terms of the belief that I have that the majority of police officers really are out there serving and protecting because I've seen it. OK, I've seen it so many times in many, many different areas throughout the country. OK, there's always going to be those knuckleheads that somehow or another were able to slip through, you know, uh, a hiring process and become police officers and they are a little overexcited and a little belligerent or overly belligerent and some of them are racist absolutely uh, but the good majority of police officers really are out in communities trying to serve and protect and they're doing so uh, being handcuffed in some ways by uh, politicians to some degree, uh, by the law or by lawyers to another degree. Uh, and so that then comes back on people that live in communities, especially communities that have a higher incident of violent crime or crime in general. And it's because the police officers aren't able to do their jobs effectively uh, because then there are individuals that don't like how a police officer spoke to a criminal or, you know, they may not like how the officer put the handcuffs on him or uh, there's always these situations where someone records the police and they only record the police officer defending themselves or trying to take the person into custody, 
but not what happened prior to that when the police officer almost got killed, you know, trying to take this person into custody. And so it looks like, you know, the police are ganging up on somebody. People people like to criticize, well, why does it take five or six police officers for one person? Well, I'll ask you a question, okay? Try putting on a coat or the boots of a two-year-old child that's squirming. See how difficult that is? Do you even know? It's very, very difficult because you're trying not to hurt the child, okay? But the tri- child is squirming and don't doesn't want the boots on or doesn't want the coats on. It's very, very difficult. And so what you have to do is you have to use a little bit more, and I use this term lightly, force, okay? Uh, In other words, what you have to do is you have to hold the child more steady, you know, you have to talk to them to get them to allow you to put it on without hurting them. Okay. well, it's the same situation. It's the same situation. So I would you would rather have five police officers trying to take a a person into custody because the likelihood, especially if it's done correctly, of that getting person getting hurt is less likely, okay, because there's five individuals, they're all trying to, to, to handle one extremity or another, and simply trying to talk to the person to, to take the person into custody. People don't understand that a lot of criminals do not want to go to jail, okay? Just like the little two-year-old does not want the coat put on. Well, a lot of criminals do not want to go to jail, and so they will fight, Okay, they will struggle. Okay, and police officers have to use defensive tactics in order to take the person into custody. Unfortunately, there are people out there that are faint hearted and think that the police are being mean and they're being abusive and that kind of thing. No, it's not mean and abusive if you're trying to take into custody someone that just shot and killed someone or just beat someone and they're struggling with you. You have to use like for like, you have to use force in order to take the person into custody. It's just that simple, okay? So, you know, these people out here that want to defund the police, you know, without thinking like, okay, well, then who's going to come to my house and save me if someone's breaking in? The police, not the milkman, not the bus driver, okay? And so in my opinion, we really ought to support our police and our police departments a whole lot more than we do. Uh, Some of us are so, you know, we get upset because, you know, when we're traveling too fast on a highway or on a city street or we clip a stop sign by not stopping at it or some other traffic violation and then we receive a ticket the first thing we want to complain about well how come the police aren't out doing something else how come the police aren't out solving crimes or locking up the people down the street well they would be if you wouldn't speed they would be if you would uh not violate traffic laws right Okay, so then that they would have the opportunity to do those things. So a lot of times people want to take, you know, what they've done, which may be wrong or against the law or against the traffic ordinance, and then shift the blame back over to the police officers for simply doing their job. So we wonder why then police officers don't get as much community support or uh, why people feel that it's real easy to take pot shots at the police. Uh or to kill them. Killing is permanent, okay? Killing is devastating. Killing is traumatic for the survivors, okay? And so again, uh, I think it's incumbent upon us to, to give respect, you know, to give honor to those that go out and do something that a lot of people do not want to do. A lot of people do not want to go to a crime scene because they are hideous, Okay, I've gone to crime scenes and I've seen stuff that 20 years later, I still remember like it happened yesterday. It does not leave. Okay, you remember these things. All right. They stay with you. Uh, So, again, you know, we, we just have to really be more cognizant of what's going on in our communities and certainly be more willing to assist our police officers any way that we can. You know, the Bristol police chief uh, in Connecticut became visibly emotional describing his two officers that were killed. Uh, He said that, and I'll quote, we lost two exceptional Bristol police officers and a third was seriously injured as a result of senseless violence. 
uh, one of those officers was a school resource officer at two Bristol schools and an advisor for the Bristol Police Explorer Cadet Program. Throughout his career, he has received several awards, including the Civil the Silver Star, Officer of the Month, and co-recipient for Officer of the Year in 2019. He was survived by his wife and two children and one on the way. See what I mean? You know, then there was Officer Hamsey. He was 34. He was also an advisor for the Police Explorer Cadet Program. Throughout his career, he received numerous letters of commendation and recognition. He is survived by his parent. I'm sorry. He is survived by his wife, his parents, and his two sisters. See, these people, leave, these officers leave behind family members. They leave them behind. Uh, and it's so tragic and so horrible. Um when these things happen, but it's even more tragic when there's so much silence from the community when these things happen. Whenever a police officer gets killed or injured in the line of duty, the community ought to, ought to rise up in support, you know, because again, these are the individuals that we entrust. These are the few that decided to do what we don't want to do or what you all don't want to do because I did it. But, you know, that people don't want to do, which is go to domestic situations and make traffic stops and investigate horrible crimes and go to scenes where people have been sexually assaulted. Uh, men, women, and children, or deal with burglaries and robberies and all of these other things that police officers have to deal with. And so uh, I'll end on that note. Let's let's just be more cognizant of what's going on in our communities. Violent crime is up in some areas, okay? And our police officers, uh, unfortunately, you know, are, um, are being attacked uh, in areas that they just shouldn't be attacked. So ugly things are happening out there to our police officers. So again, let's let's give honor to those men and women that go out and do the jobs every single day, knowing that they may not come home at the end of their shift. All right, this is Jaden Miller. Check out my website at www.jadenmiller.com. Please like, share, and subscribe on my YouTube channel. And like, comment, and follow on your favorite podcast platform. All right, thanks again, guys, for joining me on Think About It with Jaden with Jaden Miller. I don't even know my name. <laughs> think About It with Jaden Miller. Uh, and I want you to think about what I talked about today. You know, uh, you know, I think it's really, really sad, you know, for police officers to get killed in the line of duty. It's just horrible. All right. I will see you on the next episode of Think About It with Jaden Miller. Have a fabulous, fabulous day. Thank you for listening to Think About It with Jaden Miller. Don't forget to like and subscribe to his YouTube channel and like and follow on your favorite podcast platform. 